Oh, happy John ja Morant Day, everybody. This is interesting to see your daily sports podcast, news, narratives, takes, and gambling. I am Nick. The Memphis Grizzlies beat the San Antonio Spurs by 13 last night. John ja Morant, you have arrived. Everybody knew he was good, but man, I think to, last night will be the night that I kind of remember as like, oh, shit. That kid's pretty good. An enormous, an enormous dunk. Dunk of the year. It'd be nice to have a guy like that in the dunk contest. But then, at the end of the first half, with .4 seconds left, I don't know who inbounded it. I don't really, it doesn't really matter. But I, I'm sure the Memphis fans will be mad at me for that. I don't care. But they just threw it up to Moran. He essentially, with .4 seconds, volleyed it in. Here, let's watch that again. If you're that there, watch. Look at that, .4. Get the Patrick Mahomes-esque throw. Just boom, just guessing. He's like, ah, screw it. Just like chucks it. Boom. Got it. <laughs> Unreal from Ja Morant. A lot of basketball today. College and pro. We're going to go into some NFL news. We'll check some hockey scores and stuff as well. And we'll get into some hockey right now because uh, there's a lot going on with Russia. Russia invaded Ukraine, I believe, last Thursday or Friday, depending on what part of the world you lived in. And sanctions, sanctions, sanctions happening everywhere. That includes the world of Sports. So the uh, International Olympic Committee for cheating for many years has has I many like it's been like eight years now. They have not allowed Russia six years somewhere in there have not allowed Russia to compete under the name Russia. They are the Russia Olympic Committee. FIFA was going to do the same thing with soccer, and now from what I understand, um, FIFA is barring Russia from just they're just barring them from competing in the World Cup. Uh, so this is from the Wall Street Journal. The International Olympic Committee began, uh, they recommended that all Russian and Belarusian athletes be banned from international competition following Russia's invasion. <clears throat> Hours after that, the soccer's governing body, that's FIFA, suspended Russian clubs and the country's national team from all competition until further notice, effectively throwing it out of qualification for the 2022 World Cup. The 2022 World Cup will happen this winter. Qualification is happening now if you're paying attention to the U.S. and Canada. Uh, Canada might be going, which is pretty exciting for them, but Russia... You need to qualify to go, and they're not allowed to compete at all uh, until further notice, which means Russia will not be going. Um, so even if this finishes up in the next six months, if they don't qualify, they don't qualify. So they're just not allowed to compete. This also includes clubs that are professionals that are based there. Um, and this is this is one of those things where I don't think that this will have an impact on Putin, but it will have an impact on the population along with the economy and things like athletes can make some money. This will put pressure, millionaires, billionaires, famous people, they really do, they are more important in some ways, and they're going to have a bigger microphone than a lot of people in Russia. I don't know what effect it's going to have, but it's not going to be nothing. Plus, there's millions and millions of dollars at stake. When you go to the World Cup, you get a huge piece of the pie. We didn't, uh, I was out last week due to the uh, death of my aunt, rest in peace, funeral is today, was not able to make it, but while I was out, um... The United States women's national soccer team won their five to eight year, I forget how long it was, somewhere in their legal battle for equal pay for millions and millions of dollars. Now, Russia's Olymp soccer team is not worth what our soccer teams are worth, but it's not nothing. They just hosted the World Cup, which was collusion. Probably, allegedly. So I don't know what impact this is going to have, but we know that Putin does this crazy shit in years that there are Olympics. He gets emboldened by a sense of nationalism, or he does it under the cover of Olympic sport. Last time the Crimea thing happened was like weeks after the Winter Olympics that were in Sochi. Just had the Beijing Winter Olympics. Maybe not letting China and Russia host shit should be a good thing, but nobody wants it anymore. I think that Philadelphia would be a great place for the Summer Olympics, but I digress. We're going to move on to uh, some criticism of Alexander Ovechkin per the Washington Post. This headline is powerful. It is a... an editorial, I suppose. Uh, we can bring it up for you here. Alex Ovechkin's voice is powerful. His comments on Ukraine were a missed opportunity. Alex Ovechkin famously campaigned for Putin. We don't know if he actually campaigned for Putin or if he's just been coerced into like knowing to campaign for Putin because he's so famous. His comments were not great. Quote, like, I'm Russian, right? The greatest professional team. Uh, sometimes some things I can't control, you know, it's not in my hands. So he's obviously, everybody in America will want him to stand up for what's right. We have to realize, understand, like, Either A, he is for Vladimir Putin, or B, uh, everyone in his life will be murdered or something. And that's not something that we can possibly understand how it works. Freedom of speech is not a thing that happens elsewhere just because he spends his time here. That being said, um, they played... Who did they play last night? They played uh, the Maple Leafs. Earlier in the weekend, they played the New York Rangers. 
which features Artemi Panarin. And Artemi Panarin is incredibly uh, vocal in, in, uh, in, in his criticism of Putin and hates Putin. So this Ovechkin thing is going to start to become, it's going to start to become a thing. We see here from New York's Post, Dominic Hasek blasts Alexander Ovechkin, wants NHL uh, to suspend all Russian players. I've not listened to this. Let's see how it goes. Hockey Hall of Fame goaltender Dominic Hasek. I don't Hasek, have all day, dude. But also a liar. Okay, no, I don't know. So he, uh, so Dominic Hasek, quote, what not only an alibi is the chicken shit, but also a liar. Every adult in Europe knows well that Putin is a mad killer and that Russia is waging an offensive war in the free country and its people. The NHL must immediately suspend contracts. Dominic Hasek, who is from, I think, the Czech Republic, former Czechoslovakia, is calling on the, the National Hockey League to suspend all Russian national players to just get them out of the limelight and not allow them to say stuff like that. <sighs> it's an intense moment, man. Uh, and this is not going to end. Alexander Ovechkin is probably the most famous Russian in the world other than Vladimir Putin. Th- similar things have been happening in the world of chess. This is a sports podcast, but some of the most famous players in chess have been banned from competing in uh, events, which is some action we've seen with chess in the past. And Russia uses these kind of sports as a nationalist thing. And this is be, supposed to be a big year for Alexander Ovechkin. He's a couple years away from breaking Wayne Gretzky's goal record and should be a great time in his life. But man, this is, um, this has turned out to be quite, quite the shit show. Um, and that's, you know, we're just trying to keep it on the sports angle. Let's move to the national football league. Sean McVay signed an enormous contract to stay with the Los Angeles Rams. Andrew Marchand, who has a blue check mark and is allegedly a reporter for the New York Post, says that Sean McVay had a TV deal on the books for $100 million for Amazon. But they, uh, the Rams are going to pay him probably more than $8.5 million now. The extension is going to be enormous. It'll probably be the highest paid head coach in the history of sports, I would imagine, unless uh, if, unless you count Nick Saban's car dealership, car dealerships, and uh, and whatnot. Staying in the National Football League with TV deals, Troy Aikman will be officially, sort of officially leaving. Uh, this is an open secret. There have been uh, a lot of rumors about this for a long time. Trey Aikman leaving Fox for ESPN. This is also according to Andrew Marchand, but he could be going to Monday Night Football. Troy Aikman was outspoken in saying that he hopes that uh, Joe Buck and he will have a working relationship. So, quote, this is for WFAA, which is a radio station somewhere i don't know quote we have a great friendship we really do we've been through a lot we've been through a lot in our profession but we've also been through a lot in our personal lives we've kind of paralleled a lot of things in our personal lives as well we've helped each other i know that's not the norm i think a lot of partners get along but as good of friends as we are i mean he truly is one of my best friends so i think he's trying to get buck to get out of there too i mean i don't know why you i mean why wouldn't he you know like that's his uh that's his buddy Hugh Jackson, who is the head coach of Grambling, which is an HBCU, a historically black college, had hired Art Bryles, the controversial or shameful former head coach of Baylor, where there was a lot of sexual assault issues and charges and some really bad shit going on. Um, he's been out of football for a long time. The Bryles family still kind of in coaching, but he's been hot fired. Some of the players are still loyal to him. Anyway, Hugh Jackson, the former head coach of the Cleveland Browns, who's the head coach of Grambling, um, tried to hire him as his offensive coordinator, but now as a result of backlash, Hugh Jackson has decided not to hire him. Art Bryles has resigned. Due to backlash, I feel that my confirmed my continued presence would be distraction for you and your team, which is the last thing I want," he said in a in a press conference. Um, yeah, what happened to Baylor? The fact that Baylor didn't get more sanctions just proves that private school money does whatever it wants in uh, collegiate athletics. I mean, we knew that, but damn, that was not. It's a bad look. Uh, <laughs> other TV news: <clears throat> the United States Football League is suing Fox Sports over the new USFL. The USFL will return in April. 
Uh, the owners and executives for the original USFL that happened in the 80s will sue to block Fox from launching this league. They used the brand and the names in the spring league that was founded in 1983. This should be a very easy, straightforward case. Obviously, they're going to win it. And a complaint filed on Monday in a California court. Quote, the real USFL LLC seeks an order preventing Fox from using USFL and the names and the logos of any of the 18 play teams that played in the original United States Football League. It includes claims for trademark infringement and that the original USFL has rights to this shit. I think, probably didn't think that through. Yeah, I think they're going to win that case because it is, they're literally just using the exact same stuff. I mean, they didn't even really go outside the box at all. If you didn't catch this from Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray, Murray released this statement per his agent. Look at that shit. If you're not watching on YouTube, the font is like, I can't, look, look I'm going to zoom in on the picture. You can't, I can't, I literally am not capable of reading that. I have an eye thing. I can't, I can't read that. I want to give a shout out to this guy on Twitter who said probably the funniest thing I've ever seen. Quote, this is the longest essay from essay anyone from OU football has ever written. <laughs> that is, that's true. Probably. I don't know. Maybe there are smart people. I'm not sure that Lane Johnson did a ton of writing or critical thinking at Oklahoma, but what the fuck do I know? Maybe he did. So look at Kyler Murray. He, uh, and it, it, essentially what it says is they sent over a contract offer. Arizona didn't like it. And now he's like, it's on the team to play ball. Blah, uh, but the last thing that anybody in uh, United States sports saw of Kyler Murray, he was pouting on the sideline, getting crushed by the Rams, throwing a Carson Wentz-esque interception in the playoffs against a division rival that they had already beaten one point that year. So it was not a great look for Kyler. And uh, the Cardinals are not, the Cardinals are just, they're not going to pay him that kind of money. He's not going to get Patrick Mahomes money. He's just not ever. He will never get Patrick Mahomes money. Maybe he will. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think so. Because it's, it's clear that overpaying quarterbacks just means you're going to have to trade him eventually and he becomes a mess. Jared Goff, Carson Wentz, etc. So I don't think it's going to happen. But this would make them the first team, the Cardinals, unless the Browns do, but the first team to not pay a high-level quarterback who's underperforming. Most teams just pay them anyway because it's better to have one than not to have one. But nobody has done that yet. I'm going to give a shout out to Joey Gallo, the guy for the Yankees that either hits home runs or strikes out more often he strikes out. He's got like a 205 batting average with like 40 home runs. <sighs> because of the lockout, Joey Gallo is being hilarious. And he created a LinkedIn account for himself. Joey Gallo, outfielder, New York Yankees, present, eight months, outfielder, Texas Rangers, June 2012 to July 2021, nine years, two months. That's pretty funny. Pretty funny. There's some humor there. We're getting very close to canceled games uh, in the MLB. There was not going to be a big time spring training. So a lot of guys, you know, young people are not going to have an opportunity to kind of come up through the ranks and make the squad. Okay, let's move to the National Basketball Association. Scores from last night. The Kings beat the Thunders, blah, blah, blah. The Raptors beat the Nets. Whoa, that's ugly. <laughs> Yikes, guys. Someone named Scotty Barnes dropped 28 points. Good for you, Scotty. I have no idea who you are. About time to start paying attention to the NBA. No one in the Nets had more than 15 points. <gasps> Did they play their players? Seth Curry with 11. That came over in the Sixers trade. Good for you, Seth. The Magic beat the Pacers. The Heat beat the Bulls. That was the big game from yesterday. The Grizzlies did beat the Spurs. That was not a good big game. That was just John Morat coming out party. NHL last night. Uh, look, take a look at the standings. We're a couple months away from the playoffs. The NHL's trade deadline is coming up in a couple of weeks. The Panthers. The Lightning, the Maple Leafs. The Hurricanes. And the Colorado Avalanche. Actually, the Avalanche are by far the best team in the NHL right now. They have a seven-point lead on everybody else. They are, frankly, astounding. They are astoundingly good. They are very, very good hockey team. I don't know if they're historic the way that the Lightning were a couple of years ago, but they are just incredibly good. I want to take you back here, and we'll get you out of here on this. A turnover last night from the Los Angeles Lakers drew some ire. It drew some ire. Let's listen to some booze. Unbelievable. Watch this throw away. Just throws it away. No one cares. Listen to the booze. Let's just see if we can get to 30. Why not? Let's start, let's start rooting for the turnovers. And the crowd doing That'll do it for interesting to see. I'll be back and better than ever tomorrow morning. Like, rate, review, subscribe.